A new report shows more than half of the American population has had a family member incarcerated at some point in their lives. According to FWD.US and Cornell University, 113 million Americans have had an immediate family member in prison. While 6.5 million adults currently have an immediate family member in jail or prison, the U.S. incarcerates more people per capita than anywhere else in the world. So joining us now on Skype is a senior associate for criminal justice reform at uh, FWD.US, Carlton Miller. Thanks for joining us, Carlton. So listen, I was under the impression that the rate of incarceration was slowing down. At one point, we were building all sorts of prisons and that now we don't need many of these prisons, but it certainly doesn't seem like it's slowing down enough. What's going on? So, well, we, we, there are several factors that determine the cause of incarceration. Uh, look across our country, we see a, a trending pattern that we lock up too many folks for nonviolent offenses. Uh, we are sending folks back to jail uh, for technical violations on parole, uh, on probation. And as a result, those individuals are sent back to prison and they're being sent to prison for longer sentences. And as a result, uh, our prisons are uh, bloated and we're costing taxpayers a lot of dollars to house these individuals that necessarily don't need to be there. What demographics are most affected by this, Carlton? Well, well it, it starts uh, at the first contact in the system uh, when we see uh, black Americans, Latino Americans being prosecuted. Uh, arrested and incarcerated uh, far more than white individuals in the United States. Um, these individuals are the ones that are most impacted uh, and, and most uh, affected by incarceration. And what about the impact on families when you see a rate like this? Yes, yeah, so uh, it's a devastating impact that many families face in America. As our report shows, uh, one in two adults in America uh, has had an immediate family member uh, that was in jail or in prison. Um, currently, right now, we estimate that six and a half million Americans have a family member uh, that is incarcerated, either in jail or in prison right now. And the emotional toll that it takes on families, the financial toll uh, is devastating. And it's causing uh, families to uh, lose uh, much of their uh, income, it's causing fines and fees that many individuals that return home having to pay these fees and not having an ability to secure employment, uh, not having an ability to secure a driver's license to be able to get to a job or to secure an occupational license um, when they've already paid their debt to society. I'm wondering if the study took that information and looked beyond about the impact that, you know, it's having on this country. We know, obviously, that people who are incarcerated can't vote. In a number of states, people who are formerly incarcerated can't vote. You talked about the financial impact on individual families. But when you multiply that by the number of people, I mean, like you said, you know, a lot a of people lot in this of country are going to know or be related to somebody who is either incarcerated or formerly incarcerated. What does that do to this country? Well, it, it, it affects us uh, in many ways. Many of the folks that we see when we walk down the street on our commute to work or we congregate with in church or we're at the nail salon or, or a barber shop or shopping in our malls, uh, every second person that you see has had an immediate family member impacted by incarceration. Uh, the numbers are the same regardless of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, incarceration has reached beyond the prison walls and has impacted uh, everyday, ordinary folks in America. And it's time for uh, folks to be educated about the impact so that we can have a fruitful discourse and begin to understand the impacts and to help create policy that can ameliorate these impacts. So what kind of policies would address these issues, Carlton? What do we need to do to fix this? Is it beyond sentencing guidelines? Yeah, it's beyond sentencing guidelines. Uh, we have to look at uh, reentry. We understand that justice from arrest to reentry must be based on evidence. Uh, it can't be based on anecdote. And the evidence shows that uh, within 72 hours of an individual uh, leaving prison, um, that is a critical period where they need to have wraparound sources, uh, they need to have wraparound services, they need to have an ability to uh, find housing, secure a job, uh, have a game plan so that when they get out, they can be able to take care of their children, uh, be able to be
be the breadwinners for their family, and often um, provide uh, an opportunity to better their communities. Such an important study, Carlton Milter. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. We appreciate it. Tip of the iceberg.